Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecraft were launched in 77. They put the best technology they had at the time and they went to the giant planets. So they had this grand voyage, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. They realized at that point, we can transform this mission to be an interstellar mission and send voyagers out of the interstellar space. So imagine that we have the sun here and let's say Earth is here. So it's one astronomical unit away from the sun and then all the outer planets are close by to Earth. Now this, the termination shock, the first boundary of the solar system, the edge of the solar system is a hundred times this distance. So it's right here. A little bit out of scale, but yeah, the idea is much farther. Now the heliopause, the last boundaries that separate us from the interstellar space is probably 50 AU. So the 50 AU will bring us here. And Voyager 1 is 10 AU away from that, is what we believe, so it's right here. It's right at the edge and any time it's going to cross the solar system. And it took us until now more than 30 years to finally be at the footsteps to really leaving our home. So I'm being interested in science, I think, an early age I was because of my dad. And then I rebelled, wanted to do something different, movie director, writer, whatever. I kept telling my dad I want something very romantic, something that really I would be passionate about it. And my dad kept convincing me it's good for the brain to do physics, just do it for a couple of years, then you can switch to whatever you wanted. So, okay, me and my sister, physics, physics. So I was actually in physics, flunking the courses only on the third year in undergrad in physics that I fell in love. I am still, I am like that, this type of how I do research. I want something that overwhelms me, something that I'm like, oh my God, this is so poetic. This is so cool. And the last years was when I saw Feynman diagrams, I was like, whoa, this is incredible. Maybe what is a little bit unusual, that I'm the youngest member of the Voyager team. I was seven when uh, Voyager was launched. In this older mission, there's almost no young person involved and no women whatsoever, so it's a big difference. So one of the most amazing things on Voyager, that throughout these 30 years, they transmitted data to us the whole time. So every 12 hours, they send data. We are listening here, we have the deep space network. They don't have a lot of memory on, on the spacecraft, so they have to download the data right away. The um, discoveries that Voyager is throwing at us every six months, it's like a new paradigm. You have to come up with out-of-the-box ideas because the data is out of the box. It's nothing like we expected. Until a couple of years ago, we thought that we had a nice shield. So the heliopause is a shield. It's like you're going to war, you have a nice shield, and the thermal particles will be deflected. What we discovered with the Voyager data is that the shield might be much more porous. Instead of being like this nice shield, it might be much more porous, much more like a gauze. So this is, has a big you know, implications, how our solar system communicate with the interstellar space. Voyager has energy uh, to go until 2020. This all goes well. So there is tons of discoveries that will happen. The biggest one will be the crossing of the heliopause, I think everybody's holding it, their breath. Are we really going to cross? When are we crossing? This would be the first human-made instrument to touch what lies beyond our solar system. We are going to discover what the interstellar medium is made of. If it's hot, cold or hot or dense, all of this will be first, first of everything. I think this is what I was looking for, to do some kind of a science that I would say we really discover something new. It's something much bigger than us. So it'll be the biggest surprises coming up. Yeah. <laughs>